Joshua, old and advanced in years, still so much more land that has yet to be possessed. Kid Caleb calls out, Give me my mountain! And Jesus, the Word made flesh, full of grace and truth, the Lamb of God. Today on 3 in 1, as we consider Joshua chapters 13 through 15 and John chapter 1. Now, Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, You are old, advanced in years, and there remains very much land yet to be possessed. See, no matter how old you are in the Lord, there remains very much land yet to be possessed. The New Testament equivalent being sanctification. How much of my heart and life is truly, completely, utterly set apart for the Lord and for His work? Is there anything left? Anything that has yet to yield to Him? Am I completely sanctified already? I would have to venture a guess, no. We are all under construction, aren't we? We are all works in progress. And little by little, bit by bit, our hearts and lives are becoming His. And yet, even after all those wars, even after all those battles, there still remains very much land yet to be possessed. Now, that can either discourage you or encourage you and excite you for the adventure that lies ahead. Like Caleb. Remember him from your reading today? He had been battling side by side with Joshua for 45 years now. And at this point, he's 85 years old. And he is just now about to receive his inheritance of land, a land that he would have to fight for to receive. Now, at that age, what would you want? Something easy, an easy fight, a pleasant land? Not Caleb. He cries out at 85, Give me my mountain. No, I don't care if there's giants on that mountain. It's my mountain. It's my inheritance. It's mine. It was given by God to me. Now get out of my way and give me my mountain. Man, that's faith. No matter where you are in your walk with God, no matter how old you are in the Lord, God still has so much more for you. So don't settle. Don't settle down. Serve. Fight. You still have so, so much more to give and so much more to do. He has given you gifts to give away. He has given you the ability to glorify Him, and it blesses Him. It glorifies Him when you lean in and press in and fight by faith, still advancing in your walk with the Lord, still possessing by faith more and more and more of what He has already given you. You may just have to fight a bit to get it. And these chapters are great ones to go back to again and again to find a battle cry for this fight. Especially what Kid Caleb said in chapter 14. Listen, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty-five years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here, I am this day eighty-five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. (laughs) <laughs> and you know what? He did. We find out later in the chapter that Kid Caleb conquered that mountain, even in his old age, because he fought by faith, believing more in God's ability rather than in his inability. So church, don't settle. Don't settle anywhere along sanctification way. There is still so much more land that has yet to be possessed. God has so much more for you in this glorious, wonderful, worthy fight of faith. Okay, now on to our New Testament reading for today, John chapter 1. We start a new book of the Bible today, the Gospel according to John. 
Ever wonder why there are four Gospels, four perspectives, four vantage points, four aspects of the character of Christ? See, in Matthew's Gospel, he is seen as the Messiah, the King of the Jews, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. In Mark's Gospel, he is seen as the suffering servant, the sacrifice. In Luke's Gospel, he's seen as the Son of Man in his humanity. And in John's Gospel, he is seen as the Son of God, in his deity. Even in the very first verse of the Gospel of John, in verse 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, the living Word of God, the express image of the Father, the message. Jesus, he is everything that God ever wanted to say to us. Jesus is the Word of God, and in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Jesus, the Word of God, full of light and life, came into this world, into this dark world, by becoming one of us, by putting on skin, by becoming a little helpless baby. In verse 14, it said, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth, heavy-handed in both hands, one hand full of grace, one hand full of truth. On one hand, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. And on the other hand, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, the truth is that we are all dead men walking, dead in our sins and transgressions, condemned already apart from Christ. But we are saved by grace through faith. Faith in Jesus and the sufficiency of his sacrifice, as John said, as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, the Word, made flesh, full of grace, full of truth, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And of his fullness we have all received. And grace for grace. Grace upon grace. Wave after wave. Because of his blood. Because he paid the penalty completely. We can expect grace for grace. Grace upon grace. His grace is sufficient for any struggle. Young or old. And that's the truth. Now in this first chapter we find the first followers. Initially only curious disciples of John who decided one day to follow Jesus, physically, not metaphorically. They just followed him, wondering who he was. And eventually Jesus stops, turns around and says, probably with a smile, what do you seek? What are you guys looking for? What's your goal here? What are you really after? And their answer, uh, Rabbi, um, uh, where are you staying? (laughs) And he said to them, come and see. And they came. And they saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the 10th hour. Isn't that great? They remember what time of day it was when they met Jesus. Do you remember the day when you met Jesus? Do you remember what time of day it was? The event that altered your eternity, knowing him, meeting him for the very first time. Now, one of the two that followed Jesus was Andrew. And after spending some time with Jesus, the first thing that he did afterwards was to find his brother, Peter. And he brought his brother, Peter, to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. See, some say that when you translate Simon, son of Jonah, it is shifting sand, son of mud. But... When Jesus looked at him, he saw him for who he would be. See, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, 
which is translated a stone. Be encouraged. That's how Jesus sees you. When he looks at you too, he sees you for who you will be in him as you continue on this journey of possessing more and more of what God has already given you. And his great joy is finding others like us who receive the truth about our current condition apart from Christ and who are also willing to receive grace upon grace, upon grace, upon grace, saved by grace, strengthened by grace, established by grace, overflowing with grace, on our way always to tell others about his great grace. Like Philip, who when he heard Jesus say, follow me, he jumped up and did just that. Overflowing with grace, Philip found Nathanael right away and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. Do you see? That's all you need to say. Jesus of Nazareth is the Savior we've been waiting for. And if they're curious in any way, then we say, Come and see, and Jesus will do the rest, just like he did with Nathaniel, just like he did with you.